Hello and welcome to court. Today we'll be turning this wig into a Gibson girl wig. Last month, or at least I think it was last month, there's a lot that's been going on. I talked about how I wanted to do more hair tutorials and specifically more black hair tutorials. Definitely some still leaning historical. So here we are. I'm using an afro textured wig. It is synthetic. All the products I have will be listed down below. For this project, you will need a wig. I actually cut the bangs of this wig. You don't have to do that. That does make this a little bit harder. I would suggest not doing it, but I needed it for the other look. So you'll need a wig, preferably an afro textured wig. You'll need a styrofoam head. Ooh, let me be like a beauty blogger. That was the stupidest thing I've ever done on camera. <laughs> You'll need something to keep the hair out of your way while you're working. I like to use this big bag of satin scrunchies. You'll need bobby pins. You'll need tea pins. This set has uh, like hair sewing needles as well. You don't have to get a set with that, but I do sew a lot of hair, so it's useful for me to have in my arsenal of things. I've explained this before, but I like T-pins specifically because they are a little bit thicker and they also stay put in the head while you are styling a lot better than straight pins. Some sort of ponytail holder that matches the color of your wig and an optional wig stand. This is actually a bone tripod. I just removed the little tripod part and I like to stick my foam head on top, my styrofoam head on top. I'm not using hairspray for this style because I'm not making a permanent style. This is meant to be taken out if you want it to or if you need it to. In order to make this a more permanent style, you could use Got To Be Glue or any other free spray of your choice, but it will make certain elements harder, like giving that fluffy, almost messy bun sort of feel. So I'm going to start with putting this wig onto my mannequin head. And once she is centered and not in your face, you are going to use some T-pins to secure this hair down. I like to use about four T-pins, two in the front, two in the back. And when I do my T-pins in the back, I lift up my hair so that it is really into that styrofoam head and I'm not so much pinning the hair I want to pin the wig cap. I've sectioned off the very top of the hair and about two inches on either side of the wig. I want this sectioned off because I am about to braid this wig and because it's not a lace front I do need some perimeter hair to make it look a little bit more natural. Then I want to take this very back section. I've probably taken about three inches in the back all the way across and I have that just ponytailed off. So really there's just this center midsection of a lot of hair that we're working with. Split that section into two and what we're going to be doing is cornrowing these sections towards each other. If you don't know how to cornrow, that's okay. You can plait the hair. Uh, I guess you could also twist the hair, but I would work in smaller sections for twisting because the whole point of this is to remove some of that bulk. I'm truly not going for perfection here. I actually want it to be a pretty loose cornrow because I don't want to lose any fullness of the wig what I'm trying to lose is all of this excess section without cutting the hair off. Also, I cannot do this uh, sitting down, so I'll be standing up for this part. So what I'm doing is going ahead and taking my three sections. This hair has not been combed out, so it definitely will not be the prettiest. Little cornrow. And I'm loosely braiding this down towards the middle of the hair. This will remove some of that bulk, but will also keep the fullness in the back of the head, which is really important for this style. Once I get to the end, I will be tightening up that braid somewhat, but not a ton. I don't want it to pull on the wig cap, 
and by making this super tight since this is not a lace wig at all it would pull on that hair but once you're away from the scalp you can tighten that braid up some and if you're working with afro texture hair this is what that will look like you can see the wig cap a little bit but that's going to be hidden by this hair getting pulled up and then i just have a braid i do not have this secured with anything on the end the texture of the hair will keep that in place you want to do the same thing on the other side. Once you're done with both sides, it will look something like this. I'm not going to pin it or anything right now. But if you are doing plaits, I would say do maybe four to six. And then you can either plait or twist those together, depending on the number that you go with. And just spread those on either side of the head. And then if you are working with a wig that has bangs or... If you cut your bangs like I did, um, for some reason, even though I did not say to do that in this tutorial, you are going to want to plait the very, very end of this bang. So all of this back here, that part that moves, stays fluffy. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just taking this into three little sections. Let me move this so you can see it a little bit better. Bam. Bam. And then I really want to focus on only getting those bottom pieces. And if you leave out a strand or two, which I did here, that is totally fine. We will either pin it in place or gather it. You do want to make sure that you are going all the way down to the very end because this is such a short piece of hair. And then once you've done that, you can pull that hair from the top to fluff it out. But look, still remains spongy. Perfect. So now I'm going to be pinning the back. I'm going to do a bit of a cross over and then loops. I basically want to fill in any place that I see the wig cap, but I want to keep it really flat and close to the back of the head. So I'll loop this side and just take one of those little loops of the braid and then pin into that wig cap. And then what I want to do is cross over that pin so it stays in place. Bam, flat. So I'll do that same thing here and then I'll cross this part over and that part under. I know it might be hard to tell because I braided black hair onto black hair onto a black wig cap, but do you see how much flatter that is to the head? It removes so much of that bulk that would make this process so much harder. Now you're going to want to remove all of your ponytail holders because you're essentially going to be doing a very loose high ponytail but there are going to be a few steps that you'll want to consider. One of the steps is leaving out a little bit of hair in the back to give it that messy effect. And the other step is taking your time and really styling how loose this ponytail is. This will make sense in a second. The first thing I like to do after I get out all of the ponytail holders is fluff the hair. This hair has already been previously combed out because I wanted to make it fluffy for our t-shirt launch, but I really want to restore any of that that has been lost. I don't want to get rid of all of those curls, but I just want to make sure that it is super fluffy and big because I want to hide that middle section well. So right now I am just separating here and there to achieve some fullness and turning my wig about just so I can make sure everything is properly covered, especially the perimeter. I also wanted to mention while you are working on fluffing this hair and pulling out pieces that you feel like are really going to accentuate your look, you want to direct that hair going back away from the hairline as if you are prepping it to be put in a ponytail. Similarly to what you would do with your own hair if you were putting it into a high ponytail. I would not suggest using a brush or a comb for this process. 
One, because you have those braids in the middle section of the hair. But two, this is a fully synthetic wig, so it is not going to behave like human hair. You'll need your ponytail holder for this, and you just want to direct that hair up. If your T-pins are not secure at this point, um, you'll definitely want to make sure that they are secure in order to get this look. And I highly, highly, highly suggest styling this while you are looking at the face. So I'm going to put this up into this loose ponytail so you can see what I've done. This is a super loose ponytail, but I wanted to show you what I meant. It is smoothed out a little bit in the back, but not greatly. And I didn't wrap this ponytail holder at all. It is literally just collecting the hair and placed on there. The next thing that I like to do is take all this hair at the top, put a scrunchie on it, something big and easy to see. This is not going to be used in the final hairstyle, but it gets that hair out of the way so that you can start pulling out the pieces because what you want is almost as if the hair has flopped down a little bit from that bun. You want to pull down the hair so that it gives that effect. And you might have to reset your ponytail. That's okay. Your ponytail isn't final and set. And I also want to say, and this is important, this hair is not going to behave like white hair. It also likely won't look like Edwardian pictures of black people at the time because many people were pressing their hair or doing other treatments on their hair. Some people ironed their hair. This is going to have a lot of bulk to it. So it's not really going to like sit and lay and be heavy. It's going to have that airiness of an afro because it's an afro textured wig. After you've gotten that hair out the way you want it to be, just poofed a little bit. You see how it fits around the head a bit more. Take that ponytail holder exactly where you want the hair to be and then loop it back around that little bun and you should have a piece that sticks up on top. We're going to get back to this. Let's do the bangs. For the bangs, I'm just pulling up that little end piece braid that we made right here. And I am pulling that right behind the head, not too far, because I do want a little bit of a bang at the front, almost as if this ponytail extends all the way around the head. You should not have this step if you did not cut your bangs. I'm also still doing that cross section into the wig cap for this so that it is secure and you can fluff that a little bit once you get that set in place. After you remove this ponytail holder, you can either braid or twist. I personally like just twisting the ends. So I take two sections. This is pretty tangled. So give me a second. I take two sections and I really just want to tip twist the very, very ends like I'm just twisting them so that they stay together nicely. I'm not even really finishing off that end. And then I like to bring that tail end to the front so that you have that top knot secured. And then I bobby pin that into place. It's going to look a little frizzy. It's okay. It's supposed to look like that. That part is not going to be bobby pinned to the wig cap. Because if it was, you'd be losing all of this bulk that you just created up top by fluffing out that ponytail. It's just pinned to the hair. It's a little precarious, but it's cute. And it does stay. It does stay. If you're really nervous about it, you can use a strong hold hairspray. Tresemme makes a really good hairspray for wigs that is strong hold. It's not specifically for wigs, but it works well on wigs. Uh, that won't have the same effect as got to be or like a specific freeze spray. So you want a strong hold hairspray. And then I'm just going to go around the head and add a little bit of texture on this side. You can see 
I left out some bang. I'm going to separate those curls just a little bit more so it looks a little bit more natural. I'm literally pulling out strands from the ponytail to give it more natural frizz. But I just want to pull out some pieces so that it is really like fluffy and like I just threw my hair up. Ooh. And that's it. This wig is done. She is beauty. She is grace. She is a whole Edwardian wig that in real time only took me about 30 minutes to style. But unlike the Regency wig, I'll actually be trying this on for you. I will be using a wig cap. I won't be gluing it down or anything. But first, let me cornrow my hair down so I can actually do this. Okay. So my hair has been cornrowed. It's not perfect, but it doesn't really matter. I have a stocking cap here that is about my skin color. And I'm just going to put this on. It does not need to be perfect because this is not a lace front. I'm not gluing it down. I want it right at the edge of my hair. I do like to leave out my sideburns. I feel like it gives a more natural look. But let's see the full fantasy. Until next time, bye.